So you want to publish a research paper in a top Scopus Index journal in your field, but you're struggling with the blank page syndrome, you're not sure how to tell a coherent story, you're not sure how to highlight the novelty of your paper. Maybe your paper has been rejected before, and maybe you've been trying to write your paper for the last several months and you're still nowhere near finished. Well, in this video, I'm going to show you a blueprint for writing research papers for top Scopus Index journals that will allow you not only to write and submit your paper in just the next few weeks, but it will also allow you to tell a coherent story throughout your paper so that the novelty of your paper is highlighted and the chances of the reviewers accepting your papers will be much, much higher. So let's dive into my laptop and let's see what this blueprint actually looks like. If you're new here, my name is Marek Kiczkovek and I run Academic English Now, where we help PhD students and researchers publish research papers in top Scopus Index journals. So let's dive right in and let's see what this blueprint looks like. Now, um, just a little side note that this has been based on, you know, having worked with 460 plus PhD students and researchers, helping them write and submit really good papers to really good journals and it's also been based on my own experience of publishing papers successfully in top journals in my field teaching English and it's based on analyzing you know hundreds and hundreds of papers in different disciplines so this is not something that you know I invented from theory it's something that's really based on practice it's based on practical experience of our clients my own practical experience and having seen um, hundreds of published papers and analyzed the structure so if you follow this you're guaranteed that the chances of your paper being published in a really good journal are much much higher so um, here's the here's the blueprint I'm going to go over it you know step by step but really the first thing that that you've got to do is the length of the paper is to analyze how long papers are in your field I recommend that you should fall between 6,000 and 10,000 words the sweet spot is sort of 8,000 words however in different fields things can differ slightly so really what you need to do is to um, look at five papers at the very least from the journal that you're targeting or papers from good journals in your field on a similar topic using similar methodology and look at the length without references and add the average length um, in your field right here because you know this it can significantly differ you know papers in fields like medicine can be very very short like 6,000 words and papers in some social sciences especially if you include qualitative data can be much longer can be 10,000 words so it's really important that you look at that average length and remember to look at papers from good journals that um, are on a similar topic and use a similar type of methodology to what you're trying to do in your paper. And by the way, um, you want to watch this video until the very end because I'm going to show you as well how you can download this template for free. Normally, it's just part of my published researcher um, course, but I'm going to give it to you for free. So continue watching this video until the very end and I'm going to show you how you can get this template. Now, um, the first element is the introduction. Again, I recommend 500 to 1000 words, but it, it can vary depending on your field. I've, I've seen introductions as short as, you know, maybe three paragraphs and introductions that are slightly longer, that they can be a page or two pages, okay? So again, you wanna check that in your field, but when you're writing the introduction, what, what you wanna do is first of all, state the importance of the topic, then briefly review the literature, then present the research gap, and then present the aim. These four elements are almost obligatory okay uh, almost any paper in any field will include them then some papers will also have the main contributions or the main and the main results of your study after um, the aim and then the structure of the paper in one paragraph will be included as the last element also optionally so these two last elements are kind of optional depends on the field that you're in depends um, on the journey okay and 
what you want to do when you once you've downloaded this um, this blueprint is you want to see you know whether all of these elements are present in your field if they're not well you can just delete one of those elements from the table because what you want to be doing is adjusting this specific blueprint to your specific field and topic and journal okay to make it to make it your own right but that's that would be the the introduction that's the very typical flow in the introduction and then there is an optional section and it's the literature reviews sometimes you'll see um research papers that have um introduction and then as a separate section they have the literature review what do you do in that literature review section well you basically review three to five main topics that are related to your aim or question okay and these are basically the same topics that you will have touched upon here in this brief literature review in the introduction it's just that you expand them okay so for example if you have one paragraph in the introduction that briefly reviews the literature probably each of the sentences you know if from that paragraph becomes like a whole paragraph in the literature review section so again you, you're kind of looking at the same topics but you're just diving deeper into those topics and remember that if you're doing this literature review section, the whole purpose is to lead the, lead the reader to the research gap and to the aim of your study. So don't just kind of describe previous research. Um, you need to be telling a coherent story and leading the reader um, to the research gap. Okay. And then also um, another optional element after the literature review might be a theoretical framework. Okay, so this is commonly included in certain social um, sciences and in most exact sciences this isn't really um, included, so you can skip. But what's the purpose here? You basically need to define and justify the use of a theory for your study. And this theory obviously informed how you designed your whole research and this section is usually pretty short it can be you know maybe three to five paragraphs in which again you define which theory you're using and then you potentially justify why this theory is appropriate and then you tell us how this theory relates to your study and why it was used there for example maybe it was used to develop um, the hypothesis okay so that would be the theoretical framework and then after that, we dive into methodology. In some fields, in, in exact sciences, it's called materials and methods. Um, in other fields, it might be just called methodology. Regardless of the name, the structure is, is kind of the same throughout. So really, the, the three core elements here of, of materials and methods or methodology is um, defining who or what you studied. So this is often referred to materials in, in exact sciences or, you know, sampling participants um, in, in other fields, right? But you basically need to tell us like who or what you studied, okay? And then how you obtain this thing or people. So if you if you were studying people, what, what were they, um, the sampling techniques that you used to get those people to take part in your study? And if you're studying, you know, um, non-human participants or, or materials you need to tell us how you obtain those materials maybe you created them in a, in a lab maybe you bought them right so that's that's the first section in the methodology that's obligatory and then the second obligatory element is research tools and procedures so you need to step by step tell us you know what what tools were used during your research or what instruments were used in other words and what were the procedures so again if you're working in the lab you might have used certain types of microscopes for example or certain types of machines to measure certain things right these are the research tools and then there were certain procedures that you followed using those machines right to obtain your data that's what you're presenting here similarly if you you know in in more social sciences let's say if you if you used uh, questionnaires or interviews these are your instruments or tools and then with those questionnaires or interviews you follow certain procedures so you need to present them um, one by one and then finally the, the the last obligatory element here is data analysis so you need to tell us how you analyzed your data which techniques were used which equations for example it was quantitative data and um, why they were appropriate 
if that's if that's relevant so you might need to justify its use if if that technique for example isn't very common in your field you'll probably want to justify its use and then you know if it's if it's something more complicated what were the procedures of analyzing the data because maybe there was you know one specific technique or approach that you used to analyze the data but then there were you know several steps that you need to you needed to take in order to analyze the data that's that's what you want to be presenting in here um, data analysis techniques okay and there are you know also some additional elements depending on the field that you might want to include like for example um, in certain fields you might include the um, the study context okay so for example we we had a client who was studying the um, emigration after cyclones in Bangladesh okay so for, for that type of research, the, the context, meaning, you know, the area where the study was conducted, i.e. southern coasts of Bangladesh, is very important, okay? But on the other hand, if, you know, if you do research in the lab, then, you know, the, the context of the research, the background is not important, right? But that could be an element that you might include in your methodology, and it, it would be the first element at the very beginning of the methodology to be included. Now, before I get into the results, if, if you're enjoying this video and would like to work with me and my team on a more personal level to help you become a published researcher and you know basically write and submit papers to really good journals in your field regularly then book a free one-to-one -one consultation the link is right below this video we're gonna get on a on a one-to-one and -one, um, 60 minute call with you analyze you know what your specific challenges are what your goals are and try to develop together a personalized plan that will help you to achieve your goals faster and the link to book that consultation is right below this video so now um the next section after the materials and methods is obviously results and then discussion so it's important to note that in some fields results and discussion will be combined in, into one section in other fields or journals they will be separate two separate sections so you'll have results and then you will have discussion and then also the, the complexity here is that in yet other fields, like in, in certain disciplines in medicine, discussion and conclusion can be together as one section, okay? I'm going to discuss them separately because no matter how you combine these sections, kind of the, 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 the sections are still there or the, the main element of results, of discussion, of conclusion is still there, okay? And the combination is just changes the, the the headings a little bit so in the results obviously you know you need to present your main results be it qualitative from interviews with participants or quantitative in tables and in figures and the the main struggle here for people is how to organize the results section now the easiest thing that i'd recommend to you in this video is to organize it by research questions aims or hypothesis so typically in a paper you will have more than one hypothesis or more than one research aim or question so the easiest way to organize your results is to have you know research question one and then present the results research question two and present the results research question three and present the results that's by far the easiest way to organize your results on an overall level okay and then in terms of the discussion whether you're presenting you know whether you're discussing the results together um, with the presentation of the results or as a separate section that doesn't matter you're still doing pretty much the same thing so um what you need to do first of all is compare your results with the literature so you need to show us the similarities and differences between your results and those obtained in the real literature and then what you need to do is explain okay uh, what can you explain you can either explain the differences with literature so if you obtain different results from the literature well why did that happen okay or the second thing that you can explain is you can explain your own interesting results, um, maybe re surprising results, okay, um, or really important results. You want to explain why you obtained them, you think. And then the third thing is to interpret things. Um, interpretation is basically telling us, suggesting what, what you think these results might mean. What do they imply? Okay, that's kind of interpreting the results. So it's not necessarily talking about why, but it's like um, answering the question, so what? what? What does all this actually mean? And then there are some other elements in the discussion that can also be included in the conclusion. It just kind of depends how you structure it, okay? So you could include those elements in the discussion to make the discussion longer, and then the conclusion would be very short, 
or you make the conclusion slightly longer and include those elements. Which elements are these? Well, first of all, um, we can talk about practical implications of your findings. So what you might do is, one way to do it is in the discussion section, as you're you know, discussing, explaining, comparing your results, you can have one or two sentences in that particular paragraph saying what practical implications of your findings are. You can also make suggestions for future research, right? Uh, and this can be included in the discussion as well, where again, in a paragraph, you've, you've been you know, discussing your results and then you can make a suggestion for future researchers as well. Then. But these elements can also be included in the conclusion and then you make the conclusion slightly longer. So typically what happens in a conclusion is that, you know, you at the very beginning, you restate the main um, aim or the main topic um, and then, you know, you recap the key findings and highlight the importance of those findings. So you really need to highlight the novelty of your findings. So in the conclusion, you don't just want to like spend entire paragraphs just going over your findings again because we've already seen them. The whole point is to really highlight the importance of your finding. And then it's very typical to talk about the implications of your findings for practice or for research. Again, if you've done it in the, in the discussion at more length, then in the conclusion you can maybe just have one sentence to kind of recap on it. But if you haven't done it in the discussion, then you could spend even a paragraph in the conclusion talking about practical um, implications. And then you also want to point out the limitations of your study and make suggestions for future research. Now, really important, when you, when you point out limitations of your study, you want to try to defend your, your approach and argue you know, why you did what you did was, was still appropriate. Okay, so don't just like kind of list a bunch of limitations because that would be shooting yourself in the foot. Uh, you really want to try to kind of defend your approach. Despite these limitations, what, what was your contribution or how did you try to minimize these limitations? Now, as I said, normally this research paper blueprint is only part of my published researcher program, but I'm going to give it away for you, uh, to you for free. And um, the only thing you have to do is go to our published researcher community that you can you can see here to the to the free community published researcher and you'll see the join button right here the link to that free community is right below this um, video and then once you've once you've joined um, in the community um, you will see the research paper blueprint uh, post in here and you just need to comment uh, blueprint below that post and um, I will send it to you. So if you if you want that blueprint so that you can fill it in and write and submit your research paper in the next couple of weeks, then just um, go to the link below this video, join the published researcher free community and you will get it there.